Oh, interested in samurai armor, are you? Well, lots of things to say, so let's get it done. Hello, noble ones. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. If you have as much passion as I have for armor, and in specific now about samurai armor, then you probably have many questions about it. And of course, there are many different things that we can talk about uh, when we discuss samurai armor. We could talk about styles, we could talk about difference between Tosei Gusoku and Kozanedo, and many other things. But I believe that there is one fundamental question that needs to be answered, which is actually the most common question that I am asked when I show my Okegawa Do Tosei Gusoku. What is it made of? In this video we will discuss specifically Tosei Gusoku, so the sort of armor that was developed after the introduction of gunpowder to Japan. So we're not talking about the sort of armor that was used before, so the Kozane Do will make a specific video about that, so the sort of lamella armor, but we are discussing plate armor. So what was this protective plating made of? Now, most of the times we will be talking about metal, but what sort of metal? Iron or steel? And when we talk about plate armor in Japan, we're talking about itamono. Itamono is the actual plate. Now, these plates were made most of the times of iron. However, there were cases, and there are documented cases that I myself have researched, and I have to say thank you to one of you, actually, subscribers, who has mentioned to me a very interesting book that I will mention in a moment, but also many other studies that I have subsequently seeked for, looked for. I have found proof, documented proof, that steel was also used for the production of plating for Tosei Gusoku armor. But how common was it to have a suit of armor or a harness made of steel? Well, first things first, steel was not only uncommon, so we have to consider that only the richest among the samurai could have steel used in some of the areas of their armor. But in those situations when we find steel used, we find it mostly for the helmet or kabuto or for the door or cuirass. So the reason for this is that the choice of steel is a choice of a more resilient metal. And the reason why you choose a more resilient metal is because in the vast majority of cases, these armors had to protect not only from uh, spears and from um, swords and other sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat, but also from projectiles. Now, Negawa, Kozanedo, so sort of lamina armor worked perfectly against arrows. However, uh, with the advent of gunpowder, so we're talking about Tanegashima Teppo, so the much dog type arquebus, um, the uh, lamella armor was not sufficient, and so they, that's why they moved into plate. Now, iron plate is already sufficient, depending, of course, on the distance, to, uh, so you can have a bulletproof armor made of iron plate. But using steel clearly increases the hardness and resistance of your armor against projectiles. So I have to say that after reading these studies, I have changed my mind. Before I thought that samurai armor of the late 15th and 16th century was predominantly, or well actually was entirely made of iron, but now I have to say that there are situations where it was made of steel, at least to some extent. So I do stand corrected in this case. But I'm very happy about it because I found out something very interesting. So, how was it used? How did they do it? What I find particularly interesting is that in all cases that have been documented where they have done tests to see um, how the steel was applied, the steel was not used alone, but it was used in conjunction, the two metals being layered one on top of the other, so over each other. The steel being the surface, the iron being on the reverse side. Of course, this choice is quite obvious. Steel allows for better protective qualities because of its metallurgical properties, but iron can absorb and deaden the impact of any projectiles that were to strike the armor, and it would also resist breaking or cracking. Okay, so the book that I've mentioned, and it's one of the books that I've read on this topic that I highly and strongly suggest to you, is the book The Watanabe Art Museum Samurai Armor Collection, Volume 1, a book by Trevor Absalon and David Thatcher. 
Now, this is a very good book, particularly this part about um, iron and steel and also many other parts within the book that I found particularly interesting. But I do have to say that there was one part when he mentioned and he talks about iron and steel that I don't agree with and I'd like to share this with you. So it's a very good book, but you know, you always have to sort of double check information. Um, the thing that I uh, noticed that in this book, when he talks about steel, and of course he talks about the fact that it's chosen over iron in the front uh, of the of the plate because of, of the fact that it's more resilient, and that's quite obvious. But he also says that um, this has a cost as um, steel is significantly uh, heavier than iron. Now, this sounds very strange to me, and again, I'm not an expert in metallurgy, so if, if you are, or any of you watching this video, are experts in metallurgy, and you can actually let me know, I will be very happy. But for the studies that I've done, as far as I know, steel tends to be a bit higher than iron, but significantly. And again, um, doesn't it depend on the kind of steel and the kind of iron that we are talking about? I mean, as far as I know, just to give an example, elemental iron is 7,850 kilograms per cubic meter. And as far as I know, that should be as much as C45 steel. And also, and even within the realm of iron, um, cast iron is lighter than wrought iron. Although, of course, no armor will be made of cast iron. But what I'm trying to say is it's a bit of a strange sentence to say. Again, for what I know, steel can be somewhat heavier than iron to a certain extent but I would definitely not use the word significant. So I don't think it would actually make much difference in a suit of armor. Last but not least, what the book also shows, which is rather interesting, is the fact that the Japanese use the term tetsu. And normally tetsu translates into iron. And I can confirm that as a, as a person who speaks and teaches Japanese. Tetsu translates iron. Um, as a matter of fact, um, steel is normally translated into hagane. In Japanese or at least more than Japanese. The problem is though that whenever you find books that refer or ancient books or any mention of the sort of material that was used for samurai armor we always find the word tetsu. So this is also why I got confused myself considering that all samurai armor was made of, of, of iron. What I came to, to realize is that normally the Japanese when they use tetsu they actually mean metal in that case. So including steel as these proofs and tests that they have done on samurai armors in actual museums have demonstrated. But this is something that again should not um, surprise us because it happens as well with the word katana. The word katana is often used by the Japanese and this is something that I'm bringing up myself, it's not reading the book, but the Japanese, as far as my experience is concerned, use the word katana as an umbrella term. So although in modern day katana has become a sort of uh, a word, a specific word, which means the sword of a samurai. I must say that in many other cases, Japanese use the word katana to just mean sword, any sword, even if they have um, specific terms for it. So, in a way, even a bokto, a wooden sword, could be considered a katana by some Japanese speakers. So this makes things a bit confusing when they have one term and they use it as an umbrella term, but it does happen. <music> Alright then, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. See you tomorrow. Patience, Allah. My patience is too strong for you.